Hey guys, welcome back, and we are going to be continuing my position rankings in the 2024 NFL Draft, and today we're going to be going over the linebacker position. Now, this is not one of the strong position groups in this class. Um, there's really no, maybe one linebacker who's got first round consideration for me. Other than that, I think a lot of these guys are day three picks, uh, but there's some quality linebackers that I think could be nice, impactful players. Now, one thing I do want to say, linebacker is one of those positions you can find late down the board, and there are going to be guys that don't make my top 10 who are going to have good impacts in the league. So a few of my honorable mentions, Jordan McGee from Temple, Curtis Jacobs from Penn State. You've got Jackson Sermon from Cal, Nathaniel Watson from Mississippi State. Some of those guys are going to go later uh, that just aren't going to get the love. Now, every single one of my top 10, you guys can hit that link down below and go watch a full-length prospect spotlight on every single one of these guys. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you are new, and sign up for Underdog Fantasy today using my code JWAC to get double your initial deposit up to $100. The final four is tonight. You can play the higher, lower. I really like Donovan Klingen's higher on points, rebounds, and assists against that not-so-strong Alabama defense. So I'm going to take that one, leave a like, subscribe, and let's go ahead and get into it with my number 10 linebacker. And that's going to be J.D. Bertrand from Notre Dame. This is a guy, his nickname is The Captain. He, You can see it on the field. He plays that quarterback of the defense. He's got incredibly high football IQ. He's a very smart football player. He's got high stink, high instincts, a term I use to describe him, a cerebral athlete. He's very solid in zone coverage, and he's got pretty solid quickness to trigger downhill in run defense. I like what he shows there. He's solid in coverage, good run defender. His change of direction, maybe not the strongest. He's also another guy that struggled um, at times to shed blockers. His play strength was not incredible. In open field tackles, he did have a few misses here and there. Notre Dame always produces good defensive talent. Reminds me a little bit of David Long in terms of just very similar build, very smart players, good run defenders. Maybe going to be that middle-of-the-pack linebacker. I don't think anybody there is going to be a star, but I do think David Long is a good linebacker. He has been for Miami and Tennessee so far in his career, and I've got J.D. Bertrand as my number 10 linebacker. Sticking in Notre Dame, it is going to be Maurice Leofau out of Notre Dame. This is a guy that I had in a, as a top five linebacker in the season. He hits with bad intentions. He plays with an extremely high motor. He's a catch-22 athletically because when you look at the testing numbers that he had at the draft combine, it was very underwhelming for a guy that's very looks incredibly athletic on tape, at least the tape that I watched. He's flying all over the field, trying to come downhill and defend the run, which we'll get to that. Good hitter in the open field. He's a good cover guy in the shallow areas too. He's a hard hitter. He plays hard every single play. But against the run, I definitely saw some concerns. Poor run angles were taken there. He just really struggled at times. He would overextend in the run game. He would take bad angles. He just couldn't really defend the run at the level that I would like to see. He plays high at times too, making him susceptible to being pushed off by bigger blockers because he doesn't really get to lo use his lower body as leverage to make a play. I like Leofau though. I think he's a good linebacker. Should be probably a third, fourth round pick in my opinion. Reminds me of Darius Leonard. Almost identical size between the two. A lot of question marks athletically between the both of them when they were coming out of school. And Leonard ended up having an incredible start to his career in Indianapolis. Injuries ended up plaguing his career, but I think Leofau is a really good player who could have a really nice career for a while. I've got him at number nine. At number eight, it's Jalen Ford. Now, the next seven are guys that I really, really love that I think could be game changers for a long time. Jalen Ford is kind of in that mix. He's kind of right on the outside looking in. He's a really, really smart football player as well, particularly in coverage. And he's not just a zone coverage guy. He has the abilities to play in man-to-man -man coverage. He lined up against tight ends and slot receivers. He's got really good size. I know he was in at 241 at Texas, which is a really good frame. I believe he's down to about 236 now. Really like that. Uh, great football IQ. 
there are questions athletically. We didn't get to see him test at the combine in terms of his 40. That was a question a lot of people have. We really didn't get that answered. Play strength of his similarly just struggles to shed blocks at times, and especially when coming downhill. If he's met with the blocker, it's really hard for him to get out of the play. His change of direction is also an area that really struggled. Not very fluid hips. If if he was a better athlete, I think he would be a top five linebacker because he's very good in coverage. He's a good tackler. Very few misses on tape. Very smart football player as well. He reminds me of Devondre Campbell. Similar size. I know Campbell's a little bit bigger in terms of height, but I think Jalen Ford's going to have a good NFL career. He's been incredibly productive for the Longhorns. And he's my number eight linebacker. At number seven, a guy that not a lot of people are talking about, but is definitely a my guy in this draft class, that is UTEP's Tyrese Knight. Knight is one of the best athletes at the linebacker position in the draft class. Very fluid athlete. He's got incredibly good movement skills. He's a very good run defender and blitzer. Excellent timing on his blitzes. That was the thing that I really liked. When he would come downhill, when he would trigger in the run game, he would just time it so perfectly to where he was there. He's racked up a ton of tackles for losses, ton of sacks, maybe a bit of an older prospect. He hits hard, though, in the middle of the field. That's another thing I love about him. Good size, good athlete, good run defender, has some blitz upside. You'll love that. The the areas that I really struggle with, Tyrese Knight, why he's at number seven, he's not very good in coverage. And he gets caught staring in the quarterback's eyes for a very long time. You'll just catch him staring. Next thing you know, somebody's open right behind him. He doesn't do a good job of keeping his eyes between his man and the quarterback. It's really just on the quarterback at all times. I think he would be good in his own coverage scheme for those reasons. But it was something I noticed from time to time. Reminds me of Devin White. Look, White is a very good linebacker. He's a good hitter, good run defender, good blitzer, not good in coverage. All of the same things that I really like about Tyree Knight, Devin White has, which is why that pick for the Eagles never really made any sense to me because their issues were coverage. I think Tyree Knight's going to be a good player. He's probably going to go in day three. I, I think he should go higher than that, though. I think he's a really good linebacking prospect. At number six, we've got Cedric Gray from North Carolina. This might be a little low for some people, but it's missed tackles for this guy. I believe he had 57 missed tackles. Um, something like that over the course of three seasons. I think it might actually be more than that. I don't have the number pulled up exactly. His missed tackles were really, really bad. Open field tackling for Gray is not great. Now, very similarly to Tyree Knight, he's got solid size. He's very quick, a very fluid athlete. Played that quarterback spy role, a blitzer. I think he's the perfect inside linebacker in this class. He's also good in coverage. He can match up with guys on the field. He shows some good coverage abilities as well, which is what gives him the edge. He's not very strong, though. His block shedding was an area that continuously, he just couldn't really seem to disengage with his blockers. Then the missed tackle concern, which if you watch him at uh, North Carolina, there's multiple missed tackles every game. When Bobby Okereke was coming out of Stanford, very similar tools, very similar concerns. Missed tackles, maybe play strength, couldn't shed blockers at a very high level. Okereke should have been an all-pro this year. So I think Cedric Gray could have a very nice career, but there are some concerns there. I like him as an athlete. I like his size, but I've got him at number six. Entering my top five linebackers at number five, we've got Trevin Wallace from Kentucky. This was a guy, admittedly, that I was not a very big fan of. I was like, I don't buy it doesn't look super athletic on tape. And then you saw the combine numbers. You were like, wait, this guy is a really, really good athlete. You turn back on the tape, you're like, oh, okay, yeah. He's a very good tackler. He's a very good mover. He's good in coverage, and he's got solid size. A lot of things you really like from a linebacker. He's also coming with a lot of experience. But where I have my issues with him are as a blitzer and as a run defender. He just couldn't really trigger downhill very quickly. I think he's going to be a really good coverage linebacker, middle of the field roamer kind of guy who may be asked to blitz on occasions, but it felt like he wasn't as athletic when he came downhill as he was in the middle of the field. Kentucky's got some good defensive players. They had a good defense this year. I really like 
uh, Patrick Queen as a comp for Trevin Wallace. Very athletic players, good movers, good in coverage, but maybe weren't the most amazing run defenders in the world. I think there's a lot of similarities in the two's game. I've got Trevin Wallace at number five. At number four, it's Jeremiah Trotter, a guy who was my number one linebacker for a very long time. This is a guy who's got great length, but where he thrives is as that blitzing, run-defending linebacker, especially if you watch his tape in 2022. He was everywhere, it felt like, for Clemson. Just coming downhill, defending the run, sacking the quarterback. I like him more than I like his teammate, Barrett Carter, which I know a lot of people love Barrett Carter. I thought Trotter was the more athletic player. I thought he was had the better size, and we saw that. Uh, very good blitzer. His issues to me are in coverage, and I think they are very solvable problems. He just allowed some big plays in college, just seemed to let plays get behind him at times. Definitely think that's an area he can do better at. Also block shedding at times. It was all about timing when he came downhill for him. If he hit the hole, he was going to make a play, but there were times where he just missed it altogether. I think he reminds me of Jair Franklin from the Colts. Very good tackler out of every play. Good athlete, strong hitter, can come down to blitz on occasion. I like that comp for him. Trotter is my number four. At number three, we've got Junior Colson from Michigan. I think he's one of the better coverage linebacking players in this class. He's got great size. He's very good in coverage. He's a very fluid mover. He's a good hitter as well in the open field, but I think his coverage is really where he's going to thrive at the NFL level. He's very good at matching up with running backs, tight ends, slot receivers. He has that explosiveness and those athletic traits that are, allow him to do that. He had some injuries at Michigan that I think are a little bit concerning. And then his run defense, I didn't think he was very good coming downhill to defend the run, wasn't the strongest player downhill. Reminds me a little bit of Jerome Baker, just a really good coverage linebacker with good size. And yeah, I mean, maybe not the most amazing run defender, but I really like Colson athletically. I think his size is one, maybe the best size of any of these linebackers. I've got him at number three. At number two, we've got Edgerin Cooper from Texas A&M. He's, one of the, he's probably the best pass rusher of all the linebackers. I believe he had eight sacks this year from the linebacking position. He's also a very good run defender. He's a good athlete who tested out incredibly well at the combine. He also is good in coverage. So really all the tools you like, Edron Cooper has. His change of direction was not something I was in love with. I would also like to see him add on a little bit of weight. Felt a little bit slim out there at the linebacker position, but I think he's going to be a perfect outside linebacker. You could use him as a pass rusher, as a run defender in coverage. He can do it all for you. Reminds me of a Dre Greenlaw in San Francisco. But my number one linebacker, it is Peyton Wilson. Now, he's the best tackler in this entire class, I think. Every single pile, Peyton Wilson was in. He's a very good athlete. Ran a 4-4 at his size. He's got really good speed, track down speed. He's very smart, has a good, good football IQ, is a fluid athlete, great mover, good in coverage as well. His play strength, at times, it felt like he got bodied by bigger blockers at times. I think that's an area that he could get better at, at just adding on strength because he's got the frame to add on some weight. But the injury history is the biggest concern with Peyton Wilson. I think we could give him real linebacker one consideration if he didn't have his extensive injury history. Multiple surgeries while he was at NC State. But he reminds me of Foye Aluakone and just a guy who's an unbelievable tackler, really solid athlete as well. I think Wilson is a superior athlete. I really like Peyton Wilson. I think he's the only guy in this class that I would consider taking in the back end of the first round, whether that's with the Cowboys, the Packers, the Bucks. I think those teams could be in the mix for Peyton Wilson. But that's going to do it for me in this video. Be sure to leave a like on this one. Subscribe if you are new. Be sure to check out the playlist down below so you guys can see all my prospect spotlights. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.